But I can tell you this, that Old Testament pattern that God gave us for the family is God's mindset on family. And family meant everything. It meant everything. God was hoping that at this point, 25 to 30 generations into creation, that, that now man has got it. They understand what it means to be a father. And now that they've got it, let me reintroduce myself to you human beings. I am your father, God. I'm not just some big deity that lives in the sky somewhere. I'm not just this person that you must bow down and worship. I'm not just this person you should be scared to death of if you don't get all your ducks in a row. I want you to understand, I'm your father. I'm your chief caregiver. I'm the one who takes full responsibility to try to teach you in life, to use everything that happens as, as, a, as a lesson of learning. I'm going to try to turn bad things into something good for you. I'm going to raise you and I'm going to teach you. And when I need to discipline you, I will do that too. But I want you to understand something. A father disciplines sons that he loves. Now that you have got it, hopefully what it means to be a father, I want you to understand who I am. I'm your father. I got to tell you, it didn't land real well for many generations. In fact, through the whole Old Testament, there's not hardly anybody that actually referred to God as father. David did it. Isaiah did it. A couple of the minor prophets made a mention here or way over there. But for the most part, it was very hard for them in their culture to accept calling this God who at one time was just so set apart they could not even say his name. And now to call him Abba, which gets real personal, Daddy. It almost seemed irreverent. It almost seemed blasphemous that we should refer to God as Father and all the wonderful things that that would imply because it changes everything when you go from just God to Daddy. We miss it sometimes. Jesus came as the chief multitasker. We say, well, he came for one primary reason to die. Well, he said that. He also said that he came to destroy the works of the devil. He also came to teach. He also came to show grace and set the pattern. One of the things that we don't remember is that one of the primary reasons Jesus came was to show us who the Father was. One of the primary reasons he came. He even said once in John 14, 6, he said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why did he say that? Because he wanted to show them how the Father was. The only time he did any teaching on who the Father was was in Matthew 6 when he said, You know what? You guys don't need to be worrying about what you're going to wear and what you're going to eat, all the stress and cares of life. He said, The Father, your Father knows that you need these things. Your father is your primary caregiver. Your father is a good father. Your father's not blind. He knows when you're going through stuff. He knows when you need something. So don't worry. Trust daddy. That was really the only teaching he ever did on the father. What he chose to do instead was pattern how the father was. See, me and the father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So we learned at, 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 a, at a fresh level how God was as a Father. That God would take up for you when everybody else would throw you away. Because that's what dads do. And we talk about it all the time. Don't we? How many of you dads in here would say that, that on your child's worst day, you'd still give your life for them? So that's your child. You know they're having a bad day. You're hoping tomorrow will be better. Maybe it's a bad season of life. But that's still your child. And how many of you guys can say honestly, and my child is more important than my own life? I tell you, my life radically changed the last few years. There are so many things I stopped doing because I was a daddy and so many things I started doing. I have not left the... We're, we're going to Costa Rica next month. Finally getting my 50th birthday present out of the box. And, and we've went out of the country a few times since we brought Hannah home from China. But it's just like, I will not leave the country without that child. I do not want to be away from her. Yes, when she gets a little older, it's going to change. In fact, it may even change by this fall. 
Um, because though she's six in her body, in her mind, she's how old's Hannah Montana? Because that's how old she is in her mind already. Uh, so many things changed. So many things changed. What I was watching on TV. What I was not watching on TV. Hannah's my History Channel buddy. Hannah can tell you probably more than most people in this room what's on the History Channel and Discovery Channel. Because we like to learn together. Hannah doesn't watch any movies that's got chainsaws in them yet. Unless they're cutting down a tree on Home and Garden. She loves Home and Garden and she loves the Food Channel. She can tell you most of those people on the Food Channel. And she'll, she'll tell me about something they did and I'll go, Now what's his name again? Yeah, she watches Disney and stuff too, but she doesn't watch the Cartoon Channel. It's off limits. You know, no SpongeBob. And all because of Phineas and Ferb's little sister, no Phineas and Ferb now. Get the little sister off the show, she can have Phineas and Ferb back. I'm so glad a lot of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about, and yet there's some of you that need to know exactly what I'm talking about. Big sister, big sister, yeah, big sister. Thank you, Ron. Your dad, who knows what's going on, man? <laughs> no, she doesn't watch cartoons like The Family Guy. And what are some of the stupid cartoons that are on? That, that after you watch it, you feel like your IQ just dropped 10 points as soon as the show's over? Jesus came and he, and, he, and he patterned. He demonstrated the Father's grace. And he demonstrated the Father's love and the Father's mercy and the Father's kindness. At the same time, he reminded us that our Father's also pretty demanding, has great expectations for our futures. He did both. He showed us the extreme grace of the Father. He would step into a prostitute's life that culture said you deserve to die. He would step in and rescue her and say, now come on, let's start living life better. That's how a father does. A father doesn't throw away their children. A father steps in and does everything they can to rescue. Understanding, even from the pattern of God, there's some children that just will not let you rescue them. A good father also knows when not to step in and rescue. For we have seen over and over and over again that children often do not cry out for the Savior as long as Daddy and Mommy's being the Savior. It takes a father who's a man walking with God to discern. Jesus came and patterned. And now we're in this situation after 6,000 years and multiple generations. Now I'm sure God is hoping that the system is kind of like this. That we can now relate to God as a father and... Likewise, we can relate to how we're supposed to be as fathers by his pattern. We understand who he is, so now we're going, oh, thank God, because I thought you was like this mean old ogre hiding under the bridge with a big stick, ready to wallop me every time I made a mistake. Oh, yeah, your daddy, your daddy, your daddy, you're full of grace. We learn who he is, and because of learning who he is, all of us that are fathers here today are without excuse.